CSS has several properties for controlling the layout of text. In this video, we'll learn common text properties that can be used to specify line height, alignment, transformation, and more. Let's get started. First, we'll cover the line height property. Line height specifies the vertical spacing between lines of text. If the page has long paragraphs with many lines, a larger than normal spacing makes it easier to read. So the line height property sets the height of an entire line of text. The difference between the font size and the line height is equivalent to the letting. If you're familiar with typography, letting is a term used to define the vertical space between a line of text. It's measured from the bottom of the descender to the top of the ascender on the next line. So increasing the line height makes the vertical gaps between lines of text larger. Line height can accept five types of values. The value normal, a unitless number value, a pixel value, also an M or percentage value. The normal value is the default value and is equal to the unitless number value of 1.2. It's better to define line height using unitless values or relative units. That way, the line height scales with the size of the text and is proportional. A common value for the line height property is a unitless value of 1.5. The browser multiplies this number by the font size to determine the line height. And as we see, the value 1.5 is the same as 1.5m and 150%. The text align property allows us to control the horizontal alignment of text. Text align can accept one of four values, left, right, center, and justify. The left value aligns the text to the left of its parent, while the right value aligns the text to the right. The center value allows us to center the text on the page. With the value of justify, every line of the paragraph, except the very last, has an equal width taking up the full width of its containing element, similar to a book or a magazine. On a page containing several paragraphs of text, the content is easier to read if the text is aligned left. Left is the most commonly used value and is the default alignment for most modern browsers. The text decoration property allows us to set the line decoration of text to none, underline, overline, or line through. It's commonly used to remove underlines and links. So for example, in our style sheet, we'll create a new rule where we will add a text decoration of none on the hover state. When we refresh the page, we'll see that the line decoration goes away on the hover state of the link. The value of underline adds the text underneath the text. So we'll go ahead and add it to our paragraph. When we'll refresh the page, we'll see that the paragraph text is now underlined. The value overline adds the line over the text and the value line through adds the line through the text. For normal text, none is the default value. With the text indent property, we can indent the first line of text. We can control the indentation by specifying a value in either length units or percentages. So for our paragraph, we'll go ahead and add a text indent property with a value of 1.5m. We'll refresh the page and notice how the first line of the paragraph is indented 1.5m or 24 pixels. Text indent can also accept a negative value if you choose to use one. Next, the text transform property allows us to change the case of text. So with this property, we can control the capitalization of our text. We can make text appear in all uppercase, all lowercase, or with each word capitalized. So in our heading one, let's go ahead and add a value of uppercase. 
We'll refresh and we'll see how the heading is in all uppercase letters. If we add a value of lowercase, now the heading is in all lowercase letter. And finally, the value of capitalize. Transform the first character of each word to uppercase. The white space property sets how the white space in an element is displayed. White space is handled through a number of possible values that define how the browser handles white space characters and line breaks. So let's go over some of the values. The default value for white space is normal, which ignores multiple spaces and line breaks. So all space and line breaks that occur naturally are not rendered. In our markup, I'll go ahead and add multiple spaces throughout the paragraph. Even with the spaces added, the text still renders nicely. The only time you would ever use the normal value is if you had already set one of the other values and want to revert to the normal value. The no wrap value is the most commonly used value for the white space property. It ignores all line breaks and it will not allow text or inline elements to break naturally to the next line. When we refresh, notice how multiple spaces are collapsed to a single line. When using the pre-value, content is rendered exactly as written in the markup. It honors every space and line break in the markup and the natural line breaks are ignored. So in our markup, I'll go ahead and create a few line breaks in our text. When we refresh, notice how it renders the spaces and line breaks exactly as written in our markup. Even the spaces in the markup indentation are rendered in the browser. Next up, the preline value ignores multiple spaces in the markup, but it does honor the line breaks. So here we see that the line breaks are still rendered, but not the spaces that were in the markup. Finally, prewrap works like the pre-value, except that it will not force everything on a single line but it will honor multiple spaces and explicit line breaks. Lines are only broken at new line characters written in the markup. Otherwise, as you'll see, the text wraps naturally. These text properties all have excellent browser support, and as we just learned, play an important role in the way content on a page is displayed. In the next video, we'll cover more properties that allow greater control over the way text is displayed.